Okay, my server finally reboots and Active Directory Services is installed. So now if you notice, I'm logging into my domain. You can see my domain slash administrator. Okay, on the left hand side, I have Active Directory is installed and DNS is installed. So what I'm going to do is take a look at those tools that installed with it. First thing I'm going to take a look at is DNS, see what it automatically did. Underneath server one, I see a forward lookup zone and it created the underscore MSDCS, which has all of the zones and sub domains that are created in order for the domain controller, global catalog, and other domains to be found using these service location or resource records for LDAP authentication and other things that we need. Same thing inside of mydomain.prv. One thing that is important in there is same as parent host record points to the IP address of my actual server one. And then server one has its own record that points to the IP address of server one. And then inside of here, you have TCP and UDP. These again for Kerberos authentication and password authentication, these service location records are in here pointing to my server one.domain.prv, which should resolve to the server. One additional thing I wanna add here is a reverse lookup zone. So a reverse lookup zone is just the opposite of DNS. Instead of resolving a name to an IP address, we know the IP, we need to figure out what its name is. So we need to create a new zone using the IP version four, and I'm gonna choose all default options here. And again, I'm doing an IP version four reverse lookup zone. So I need to put in the first few octets that this zone will hold records for. Allow secure dynamic updates only and finish. So now what I need to do is inside of there, I don't have any records except the same as parent start of authority and the name server itself. So I need to go back to my domain controller, double click on server one and tell it update your pointer record, which will add that record inside of this reverse lookup zone. Hit okay. Now if I go back and hit refresh, I should now see that pointer record exists for server one. That should all I have to do in DNS. We'll play with DNS later on. Okay, next, I wanna take a look at Active Directory and see what it did. So now I have these five different Active Directory tools that I can play with. The primary one that we're gonna be messing around with, the Active Directory users and computers. So you can see the mydomain.prv was created and in it we have these built-in or default organizational unit containers. And here we can see in domain controllers, our server one is the first domain controller, the only one actually. And underneath users, it has the administrator account, which we just logged into, guest, which is disabled. And then we have all of these other different built-in groups that were automatically created. These are called security groups. And we'll talk about these different types of groups later on. Computers, we have none. Well, let's get our computer ready to be joined to the domain. In order to do that, any average size company has something called DHCP to authorize their workstations to be able to communicate on the network. So I need to add DHCP as a feature to my server. So back in Server Manager, I'm gonna add roles and features. Next, next, and this is the server that I'm gonna be messing with. And in this list, I should see DHCP server. It says, do you wanna install the DHCP tools? I sure do. And next, 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 and install. That's installing all the files, programs, and features that I need in order for DHCP to work on this server one. which will allow my workstation to obtain an IP address for this network. OK, 
Okay, so it gives me a little option to complete DHP configuration, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go through the manual method this time instead of using the wizard. So I'm going to hit close. And I'm going to go up here to tools, and I should have a new tool called DHEP. I'm going to open that up. DHEP manager. Let's take a look. DHP manager, we're going to expand my servers, and you can see I have IP version 4 and 6 options. They both have a red down arrow because they're not authorized to work with Active Directory. They tie those two together. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our server and then up in the action menu, authorize it. And all we have to do now is hit refresh and what it does is it just authenticates the DHCP service into Active Directory. Now we can create a new IPv4 scope. So we're going to right click on IPv4 and select new scope. Scope name, my LAN. A more descriptive name for my LAN. All right, so the start IP address in the same subnet, 172.16. And I'm going to start these workstations out in the one octet and 172.16.1. Dot for some reason, the other one up there didn't populate. So 172.16.1 through 0, 172.16. Oh, what the heck? We'll give them 512 addresses they can use. Uh, the subnet mask is the default 16 bit subnet mask, so we're going to leave it at that. Exclusion range, I don't need to exclude any, so we're going to leave that. Least duration, we're going to set this to 8 hours. And do I want to do additional options like gateways, DNS, and other things? Yes, I do want to configure those. So the gateway, it's just a pretend one, because I don't actually have a gateway out of this little network that I've created, but I'm going to pretend that there is one. And the DNS server parent domain, my domain.prv sounds good. The server happens to be server one. I can hit resolve, but you can see because it already knows that there's a DNS server running on this server with DHCP, it automatically just uses that as the IP address for the DNS name server. I don't have any Win servers. Again, this is for older NetBIOS computers, older Windows, like Windows 98, 95. Do I want to activate this scope now? Yes. If you didn't activate it, you'd have to right click on it to activate it. So the scope, you can activate and deactivate right here with this right clicking option as I was talking about. So now my scope is, is there. But address leases, I don't have any. So I'm going to jump over to my workstation. And I'm going to make sure that the network settings, which is this icon right down here, open network and sharing center, and change adapter settings. Here's my ethernet adapter. It should automatically be set to obtain IP address through DHCP. Everything is set automatic. Hit OK. And now if I go to the command line, this is my favorite tool, ipconfig. It doesn't have an IP address. So what I need to do is force it to get an IP address, ipconfig forward slash renew. And it should go out there and ask to get an IP address. And it's saying, hey, do you want to allow this computer to be discoverable? Nah. But it obtained an IP address from my DHCP server. How do I know? If I type IP config forward slash all, you can see the DHCP server that it obtained its IP address from is 172.16.0.10. The IP address it got was the very first one, 172.16.1.0. And it put itself in the DNS suffix. This is not the domain, but it's using the DNS suffix mydomain.prv. So when I ping a computer name, like ping server1, it automatically appends mydomain.prv to that. So you can see right here, all I did was ping server1 but it appended the domain suffix, the DNS suffix. So it actually pinged server1.mydomain.prv. Before I can join this workstation to the domain, I need to make sure I can communicate directly to the domain. 
So I want to ping my domain.prv and I should get a reply back from the IP address that has the domain controller that holds Active Directory. 172.16.10, that's the actual IP address of my server. So now that I can communicate to my domain controller, I verified everything is good. I'm now going to join this workstation to the domain. Right click on this PC, go to properties, and right here underneath computer name, domain, workgroup settings, I'm now going to change this from a workgroup into a domain. My domain.prv. It's going to now contact my domain and say, well, you need to be an administrator in order to join this workstation to the domain. So go ahead and type in the administrator account and password. It authenticates and says, welcome, you are all good to go. We need to restart. That's fine. Let's restart. While it's restarting, I'm going to create a user in my domain and see if I can log in as that user that I created in my domain. If you remember, Active Directory Tools is the Active Directory Users and Computers. This is where we're going to create a user. We'll just create a user underneath the Users OU. Create a new user object. User is going to be Bob Smith. Bob.Smith will be the actual login name. Password.1, very easy. And I'm going to uncheck this option because I don't need them to change their password right now. But I would if it were a real user because I don't really want to know what their password is. All right, now that Bob has been created in Active Directory, I should be able to log in as Bob on my Windows workstation. It defaults to the local admin account. I don't want to log in there. I'm going to log in as another user. Notice it does show the sign on to my domain. So it's assuming you want to log in as a domain user. So Bob Smith as the domain user, password.1. And I should be logging in as Bob Smith, whom I just created. That's it.